Amen. Amen. You know, on mornings like this, um, we, we come in with different dispositions. Uh, some of us, depending on, uh, on the morning, and, and we don't always come with the same disposition. Some of us are just ready to go. We, we had our coffee and are just, I mean, we're, we're just there. Some of us, we just drag ourselves. I mean, uh, making it is an accomplishment. And, uh, and, um, and if you're anything like me, having gone to uh, worship services or, or meetings together, when the family meets together, I've gone feeling different ways at different times. I mean, there are times I couldn't wait to get there. There are other times that I got there because I didn't want someone to ask me why I wasn't there. <laughs> and there are other times I've been there because, uh, uh, um, you know, my, 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 it, was, it was just a convenient thing to do. Anyways, I, I said to say that there are different things and different places. And that's one of the challenges that when we gather together and, uh, and it's one of my prayers whenever we, we do something uh, that tries to inspire and encourage is to be able to meet everyone's needs. It's a very difficult thing. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. And uh, there are times that I have said some things and um, on people's life, uh, were, were somehow inspired and encouraged. There are sometimes I've said some things and people have been discouraged. Uh, there are some times, on the other hand, I didn't say some things and some people would come up to me and say, I remember when you said this or this is what you said. Oh, what are you talking about? I, and, and, and those are the times I honestly believe. It's when the Holy Spirit speaks to people even when uh, the audible words were not there. And uh, so I don't know how all of us are doing at this point in time. I think it's an important thing for our mental welfare. Next week, what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk about our um, mental um, health. We'll talk a little bit about that, actually quite a bit about that. And um, as, as you can imagine, given this situation, some people are doing better than others. And, um, and I think it's important for us to talk about how we're doing and how are we coping uh, uh, through this time because it certainly, certainly can be challenging. And so, like I, like I said, there are, uh, uh, on the spectrum of life, we can be in so many different places. You know, um, we're going to look at a, a, an encounter that Jesus had that... Um, it's at the end of uh, uh, the book of John, and, um, and it's his encounter with uh, Peter and the other apostles. And, and so this was a, a very interesting time. Well, it's always, uh, they're all are interesting, but it's, it's particularly interesting in this time. They have gone through a, um, a roller coaster of emotions. Um, they had been following Christ, and all of them uh, uh, had come to the cross, and, and, and uh, uh, they all deserted Jesus, and uh, that's what the Bible tells us. And, uh, of course, we remember that uh, Judas betrayed him and for 30 pieces of silver, um, and we know that Peter denied him, and um, and. Three times he denied him. That is the Christ. And Peter and Judas oftentimes get a bad rap, but of course, the other 10 deserted him. And so one was a betrayer, one was a denier, but the rest were also deserters. And um, uh, that's what the Bible tells us. And then the Christ um, was, uh, Jesus was crucified. He of course, was buried in the tomb, and three days later rose again. And so uh, from a place of desertion and denial, and one of them even betraying him, uh, to this point now where uh, they're, they're elated some, because they have now um, 
know that Jesus was indeed resurrected. And of course, we know, put it piecing the, the Gospels together, that he told them, hey, remain in Jerusalem until I give you further instructions. And ultimately, we know they didn't necessarily know it at that time, but we ultimately know that they were waiting for the day of Pentecost. And the day of Pentecost ultimately came when Jews from all over the world gathered around Jerusalem. And, uh, and then it was an opportunity for Peter to preach the word. And, and then we understand 3,000 people were added to their number that day. But our spiritual walk with God is not always, actually, it probably never is turning on and turning off of a switch. You know, when I walk into a room I, I, and the room is dark, I press a button and the light just comes on. It goes from darkness into light. Our spiritual walk with God is not, oftentimes not like that. It's not a button that we can turn on and we turn off. Oftentimes it's more like a dimmer switch. Um, where, where it goes out slowly, our spiritual walk with God, oftentimes without even realizing that we're drifting or that the dark, the light is getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And similarly, it's not something that we just turn on back spiritually. And I, I'm guessing, you know, that's partially what's happening here. And these guys have been on a roller coaster from denying the Christ and betraying the Christ and deserting the Christ uh, to now uh, experiencing some exhilaration and seeing the resurrected Christ. But as, as we can see here, it doesn't necessarily mean that they were all there spiritually. What happened was in John chapter 21, we read that uh, the guys were waiting for their further instructions. And, and I don't know if it was one of those days and, and, and Peter says, hey, let's go, let's go fishing. And so there, a few of them, and they went fishing, okay? And of course, we, we realized this was the scenario where Jesus, uh, they're coming back in, they see a guy on the shore, they didn't recognize who he was until they, they, they came closer and they heard his voice and, and then they rushed to him and he's, beckoning, he's making breakfast for them. And so we pick it up in verse 15 it says when they had finished eating jesus said to simon peter simon son of john do you love me more than these yes lord he he said you know that i love you jesus said feed my lambs again jesus said simon son of john do you love me he answered yes lord you know that i love you jesus said take care of my sheep the third time he, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. You know, I've mentioned this a few times, and, and, and it's, it's, bare, uh, it's worth repeating. Um, aren't we so glad that God doesn't ultimately judge us in our worst moments? that we are not defined by our worst moments. Um, and none of us would like to, to do that, to be defined when we have either been bitter, angry, unforgiving, just uh, mean, um, unkind, uh, and, and, and whatever words, and, and even as Christians, I'm not talking even non-Christians, I'm talking even as disciples, God forbid, there are times that our fleshly nature becomes a better part of us. And, um, and 
as Jesus was trying to restore, and maybe he, 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 he is now bringing into focus the keys that was given to Peter, and Peter needed to, to get back where he needed to be, and was he ultimately preparing him for, for the day of Pentecost, for him to, to preach a sermon with conviction and with, uh, with great clarity? Um, is this for his life perpetually? Um, maybe all of the above. But it seems like Peter needed to be reinstated, as the, as the NIV people like to put it. Or he needed to be restored. He needed to be revived. Whatever it needs, he needed some injection of faith. And, and Jesus, amazingly, asks him some questions. And Peter, as some of us sometimes need somebody to ask us, hey, how are you doing? And we give the cursory, I'm okay, or I'm great, or I'm good. And then someone who really, really, that you have a relationship with says, no, how are you really doing? And then, you, you know, you, you're a little bit more open. And then someone says, no, no, how are you really doing? Depending on the relationship you have with someone, if it's not someone that you know very well, that irritates you a little bit. If it's someone that you knows well, it, you, 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 you open up a little bit more and you share and you feel a little freer. And it's sort of like, to me, it's, 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 it's sort of like what's happening here with Peter. Jesus, Jesus is gently helping him to get back where he needs to be spiritually and, and really meeting him where he's at. And I've, I've often said that I really have changed a lot of how I look at God or it has evolved or maybe even matured, that I realize God is not a formula. It's not a formulaic thing, that God meets us wherever we're at. And so this morning, wherever we're at, God is such a gracious God that he comes and he meets us. And hopefully this morning, something is going to be said to really inject some faith into you or maybe prick your conscience or do whatever. Interestingly, some things that Jesus said, as loving as he was trying to be, it hurt Peter. And, and I think sometimes we got to realize this, that it's not always a hug and a kiss. Even sometimes a hug and a kiss might hurt. And, and, and the Bible says the third time that Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He got hurt. And I think it's important for us to understand that it's not always, wow, it's just blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven. Ultimately, it's like that, but not always on that journey. And I'm so thankful that we're not judged only when we're not doing well or we're not doing our best. And that the grace and the mercy and compassion of God is that he's always leading us through experiences, through relationships, through circumstances, ultimately to draw us back to him. And so that we can live out what God has intended for us to live out. And the truth is, a lot of us are going to do better during this time of quarantine when we understand that in spite of all that's happening, that part of what's happening is the God who guided Peter back into being what he needed to be is the one that continues to guide us to where we need to be. And even if sometimes we stumble, it doesn't mean that he's forgotten or will forget about us. 
until sometimes he's got to come back again and again with the same question. Sometimes we've got to hear the same things over and over again. Interestingly, Jesus said to Peter what he said to him many times earlier. He said, come, follow me, even at the end of this book. Again, the call was issued. And so re repetition is not always a bad thing. And I'm so glad that as this encounter that Jesus had specifically with Peter, and he had many encounters with Peter. This one, he's saying to Peter, and he's saying to all of us, I've got a vision for your life. And I am not going to merely relegate you into a corner of waste and nothingness, but I've got something for you to do so that you can be purposeful, that you can feel a sense of destiny, a sense of accomplishment. And that's one of the great things about being a Christian that really changed my outlook on life. I had, for many years, had a knowledge of God. I mean, all my life, I basically understood that Jesus was the Christ. But not only did I, uh, not only until I sat down and someone helped me to understand, wow, there's more to this Christian life than merely believing in Jesus. That there's a purpose to it. And that the, it is of such great value that it actually it awakens in you an energy and an inspiration and it gives you reason to get up in the morning it gives you reason to live this life Jesus without a doubt in the way that he is painted by the book by John in his encounter here with Jesus is saying to us, I'm not going to judge you and I'm not going to define you by these moments in time, but I've got a purpose for you and I'm going to lead you and I'm going to guide you and I'm going to lead you as the Bible says with loving kindness to ultimately fulfill your destiny. And so I ask you, whatever you're going through in your life right now, how is God ultimately leading you to the destiny to which he has called you? Is it, are you at that moment where you're a little hurt, like Peter was? Are you that moment of elation? Are you, are you just, where are you in that spectrum? And given the fact that we have a number of people here today, tells me that we're going to be at different places. But this Jesus that we know ultimately tells us that I am going to guide you to the point where you have an impact on people's lives that is going to change people's eternity. And so let that be something that you think about today, something that guides you and, 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 and encourages your soul to realize, man, God is working in my life right now. And he's not, even if I'm not doing well, He's not giving up on me and that he's ultimately helping me to fulfill my destiny. And that's the Jesus. And that's why this is not something, this, this life is not something that is just mundane. It's an ultimate journey that I'm on 
that I'm so, so grateful for. And that's the Christ that we serve. Tonight, we're going to look at, um, you know, another angle of Jesus and, and why Jesus irritated some people and who got irritated by him and why ultimately. And so uh, hopefully um, uh, when we come together at the end of tonight, uh, we're going to have a chance to get inspired and understand this Jesus even more. Amen. Awesome. Uh, see you guys back at seven o'clock and I'll close this with a word of prayer. And Tony, then, yes. Before you pray, it's Liam's birthday. Liam's birthday. <laughs> what? Happy birthday, Liam. Liam, how, 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 how old are you, Liam? For real or how old do you want me to tell you? Uh, how old for real? Let's start for real. <laughs> how old do you feel? How old do I feel? <laughs> I gotta come up with a witty answer for that now. Thirty. <laughs> How about if we tell you I'm thirty? <laughs> You're thirty. Yeah, you can believe from all the the white hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter's behind you. What does she say? <laughs> How old is your dad? <laughs> Happy birthday, Liam. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. I'm 44. 44. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday. He's still a youngin'. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh, oh to be 44 again. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. What are you birthday, talking about? I thought, I thought you were 29. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Uh, happy birthday. We're grateful to God that He has brought you into our lives and thank you for being a great servant. Thank you for being a great brother, and uh, you are a blessing uh, from God to all of us. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. God in heaven, we're just so grateful by the way that you meet our needs, and uh, we're grateful specifically for Liam today, and we're thankful that uh, he uh, made that decision to follow you and became a part of this family, and, and, and now that uh, we're able to be encouraged by him. Thank you for blessing us with him. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for, uh, as, as we're understanding the dynamics that he has with his disciples, we're just so amazingly uh, enthralled by who he is, by his graciousness, by his mercy. And Father, help us to continue to fall more and more in love with Jesus. And that, Father, we ultimately understand the destiny to which he has called us and help us not to fall short and to ultimate, ultimately see ourselves the way that God sees us. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for his death because it meant life for us. In Jesus' name, amen.